In the first lecture, yes, we didn't do question 18. I told you I was going to come back to it. So let's quickly do that before we start the lecture. So question 18 says, at a stomatologist, a patient developed bronchospasm, which was cured with 5% ephedrine hydrochloride. In 20 minutes, the bronchospasm repeated. And then when they gave ephedrine again, uh, it, did, it, it didn't show any effect. Why? So we should know that ephedrine mechanism of action, as I said in the first lecture, is what it inhibits the reuptake of no adrenaline. So it means that if no adrenaline is not reuptaking, it means no adrenaline is just like in the synaptic space, yes, freely doing what it wants to do. So don't forget that no adrenaline is also uh, degraded by monoamine oxidase, yes. So if you give ephedrine, it inhibits the reuptake. So we don't have norepinephrine in the um, presynaptic vesicles. And then the not adrenaline that have been released, or would I say that was not reuptaking, would be degraded by monoamine oxidase. So why did ephedrine not work again? Because because it was exhaustion of the noradrenaline depot or exhaustion of the noradrenaline vesicle in the presynaptic endings because as I said, it inhibits the reuptake. So normally when this norepinephrine, normally norepinephrine should be released. And then when it's released, it is reuptaking back here yeah, so that it's not degraded by monoamine oxidase. But when we give ephedrine, it inhibits this reuptake. So it's not reuptaking and then the noradrenaline is broken down. And then we don't have what noradrenaline in our um, presynaptic vesicle or depot. So I hope you understand that. So now that we are done with that, let's move on to antipsychotic. Now, I know a lot of students are find this very challenging, but for clock, it's very easy. Okay, so before we started, we didn't finish it. We stopped in 50, so let's quickly finish it. A patient has anaphylactic shock from which adrenal receptor agonies will cause the maximum therapeutic effect. So it will be adrenaline, yes, adrenaline. And not no adrenaline, yes, it will be adrenaline because they're asking you which will have maximum therapeutic effects. So it will be adrenaline because adrenaline is, is non selective, it binds both alpha and beta, yes, but no adrenaline is selective, only binds to alpha. So it's so it's for maximum effect, we should give adrenaline, yes, because it's shock. We need to raise the blood pressure down. And I told you in shock. Most times, pre, um, patients who have hypoglycemia, so to just prevent hypoglycemia complication, yes, we just give adrenaline to fix both the glucose level and the blood pressure, yes, so that's why the answer will be B. A patient has collab collapsed states because of peripheral vessel tone decrease. So I told you that once the very when they're talking about the peripheral vessels, yes, that's the artery or the peripheral resistance is your artery, central is your heart. Your arteries are the peripheral, yes. I told you I'm talking about peripheral, I'm mostly referring to diastolic pressure. Yes, and if the peripheral tone decreases, it means there's vessel dilation. Yes, if there's vessel dilation, the diastolic pressure or the blood pressure will decrease, yes, hypotension. So what do you think will be most effective for my last lecture? You are right, the answer would be mesaton. Yes, why mesaton? Because mesaton is selective for only alpha-1. Yes, so when we give this alpha-1 agonist, it will cause uh, vessel constriction and raise back the blood pressure. A patient uh, came to a traumatologist with acute arterial hypotension. So it's arterial hypotension, yes. So artery hypotension. So it's the same question we just did previously. What drug uh, stimulating adrenergic uh, innovation will you give? So of course, it has to be mesatonium because I think when you're talking about arterial hypertension, they're talking about the vessels. Yes, yeah? so there's vessel dilation. We need to cause vessel constriction to increase the uh, pressure. Yes, if you increase the pressure, you also increase the resistance too. Yes, it's good. So that the answer is D. During a tooth extraction, a patient had bleeding. The dentist imposed a tampon with a medicine to stop the bleeding. What drug was it? So of course it would be adrenaline. Why? Because adrenaline causes vessel constriction, yes? Because vessel constriction will have less uh, blood loss, yes? Why not naphtizilinium? This naf naphtozine, yes, forgive my pronunciation, is alpha 2, yes? And I know I keep saying I'll explain alpha 2. Don't worry, I'll explain it. Please, if I don't explain it, someone should remind me at the end of the lecture. Yes? 
then isadrine is beta one and beta two. If we give uh, isadrine, we increase heart rate and we call bronchial constriction. So I don't think that have any effect. Yes, if there's increased heart rate, it can it can worsen the bleeding. So that's why I have to give adrenaline. Yes, adrenaline will. Why not prozacin? Prozacin is, if I'm correct, alpha one blocker. Let's check prozacin. Yeah, it's alpha one blocker, as you can see here. Prozacin is an alpha one blocker. Prozacin is an alpha one blocker. So if we give prozacin, we block alpha one. Yes, it's an alpha one adrenergy blocker. If we block it, it will cause vessel dilation and that will worsen the bleeding. So we need to constrict it. So that's why I give it adrenaline. For the treatment of ischemic heart disease, a patient was given beta adrenal antagonist, so a beta blocker. After a while, he had cough and bronchospasm. Which drug was it? So he has ischemic heart disease. And I told you, ischemic heart disease, myocardial infarction. The last thing we want to do is increase heart rate. So we always try to decrease heart rate in the patient with ischemic heart disease. And they gave a beta blocker. But after they gave, it, they gave this beta blocker, yes, to decrease heart rate, they found that there was bronchospasm. Why? Because they also blocked the beta 2, yes. From my last lecture, we blocked beta 2. You cause bronchospasm, yes. So that's why they gave a propanolol. Yeah, propanolol is beta 1 and beta 2 blocker. So now that we are here, let's begin with our short lecture, yes. It's very easy. There are just a few things you need to know. Okay, so let's talk about um, ethanol, hypno. Hypnotics. Hypnotics means they want to uh, cause sleep. Yes. Then we talk about anti Parkinson and so let's talk about um, poisoning with um, methanol first. Poisoning with methanol. So if you look here, if you look here, normally methanol, yes, or alcohol, anything that ends with OL are alcoholic in nature. Yes. And what happened is that in the, please, I want you to remember this is very important. I need you to know that methanol will be converted to form aldehyde by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. Or form, form aldehyde will be converted to formic acid by aldehyde dehydrogenase. Please, what causes that drunken state is the formic acid. Formic acid is very toxic. Yes. So how do we, when the patient comes with, alcohol poisoning, how do we treat? There are two drugs. We have ethanol and the next drug I will show you very soon. How does ethanol work? Ethanol is very similar to methanol because yes, they are alcohol, alcohol. Yes, and they are both alcohol. What happened is when we give ethanol, you can ask why are we giving alcohol again? Good, that's a good question. Ethanol will compete with methanol for this alcohol dehydrogenase because they're very similar. Yes, I told you alcohol, yes, OL. And because of that, ethanol, alcohol dehydrogenase would, um, it has more affinity for ethanol. Yes, so it will break down ethanol and not break down methanol. And the end product of ethanol is not as toxic as formic acid. Yes, and this was how we treated alcohol poisoning. But now a new drug, I think it just came like five years ago, yes. A new drug has been found, yes. This is very important, please. The name of this drug is called Fomipizol. Look here. Fomipizol is a new drug that uh, they have found. Fomipizol will inhibit alcohol dehydrogenase. If we inhibit alcohol dehydrogenase, we cannot convert what methanol to formaldehyde, yes. If we cannot make formaldehyde, we cannot make formic acid. So that's how it works. Okay, now that I've talked about alcohol, the next thing we talk about is poison. Okay, I've talked about... Um, Okay, let, let's talk about poisoning with ethanol. Yes, what if you are poisoned with ethanol? The first thing you need to do, we talk about methanol, yes, the first thing you need to do is lavage the stomach with potassium magnet. We need to remove this excess alcohol. Then we can give analeptics like uh, bemigridum. Analeptic means they increase their respiratory stimulants, yes. You can the other drugs we can give. But Croc will mostly talk, of, talk about methanol, yes. So hypnotics, as I told you, they want to induce sleep, yes. Let me see, yes. For insomnia, yes, to induce sleep. Two classifications need to focus on barbiturate and benzodiazepine. What's wrong between barbiturate and benzodiazepine? Benzodiazepine, also known as BZD, yes. As you can see, the end, the end mostly end is the palm, the palm, the palm, yes. The difference is that phenobarbital here, I strongly recommend, okay, before I recommend any video, let's quickly, okay, so let me start from benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepine, they stimulate uh, the GABA channels and it is the GABA receptor. When they stimulate the GABA receptor, this will cause more chloride ions to flow in and cause more inhibitory signals, yes, and there's more inhibitory, you feel drowsy and sleep. That's all you need to know. I need to know that for if Cox talking about epilepsy, it's phenobarbital, that's, that's, that's what will be the answer, yes. 
what other special things do you need to know for croc? If there's poison with barbiturates, yes, such as phenobarbital, what lavage systemic activated charcoal, magnesium um, sulfates, and please beme grid dom beme grid, very important, yes. Then there's a pins like natural as a palm. Please, it's very important for you to know that it has less side effect than phenobarbital. Okay, please, you should know that. Okay, the next thing we need to talk about is so I told you when they're talking about epilepsy, yes, to stop epilepsy, it's due to mostly be phenobarbital, but there's another drug I will. It's mostly be what? Phenobarbital, yes, or phenytoin, but please focus on phenobarbital. Then quickly, I also want to talk about another drug, uh, sodium vaporate. What's the making of action? Sodium vaporate inhibits GABA transaminase. I told you, anything that ends with ASC, they are enzymes. So as I guess, GABA transaminase what breaks down GABA. So if we inhibit the breakdown of GABA, we'll have more GABA that will cause more inhibition and Yes, and what is epilepsy? I think what's the difference between epilepsy, convulsion, and seizures? Convulsion is the physical jerking movement. The person is uh, jerking, yes, in the involuntary contraction. That's convulsion. Seizure is disorder of the um, electrical impulse in the brain. So we have the positive and the um, negative, yes, the inhibitory and the excitatory. So seizure is when there's a disbalance. Epilepsy is the disease. So this is when you have multiple seizures. Seizure is just the attack. Okay. So that's why, so now that you know that, so if we inhibit, um, so when we have epilepsy, yes, we have a lot of positive than uh, negative. So we have a, a lot of excitatory, yes, than negative. So we give GAB, uh, we give sodium vaporate also to inhibit GABA transaminase. So we don't break down GABA and then GABA is inhibitory. So that we have increased inhibitory to balance out that excess excitatory impulse. You see how it works? Good. Okay, it's another difference. So you can have there, you can have a seizure attack that can present with convulsion and seizure attack that would not present with convulsion. So I think in some lectures ago, I gave, I, I recommended a video for you to watch so that's for fun, yes. Okay, let's talk about Parkinsonian disease. So Parkinsonian disease, we've we'll talked about in, in, in physiology, yes, is due to damage of the substantial nigra. The substantial nigra makes dopamine, dopamine, yes. So if we damage, if there's destruction of the substantial nigra, we don't make dopamine. And uh, what are the classic signs of, of Parkinson's disease? Please, in Croc, in Croc, we'll talk about, um, in Croc, we'll talk about Parkinsonian disease, we'll talk about resting tremor, drugs, uh, liver dopa, yes, liver dopa. What is the mechanism of liver dopa? Please look here. Liver dopa is a precursor to dopamine, so meaning that it, it is converted to dopamine. Yes, yeah? so uh, dopamine, what happens if we can't just give dopamine? Why? Right? Because dopamine cannot cross the blood brain barrier. So we give liver dopa because liver dopa can cross the blood brain barrier, and then when it gets into the brain, it will be converted to dopamine by the dopamine enzyme because we can't make dopamine, but our dopamine making enzymes are fine. Yes, so. If we can't give, we can't just give direct and um, dopamine intravenously direct, yes, because it cannot cross the blood brain barrier. So we give liver dopa, so liver dopa will cross the barrier and then be converted by the enzymes to dopamine. That's the mechanism of action, yes. Okay, what is the next thing you need to know? The next thing you need to focus on would be let's talk about anxiolytic. So, anxiolytic, okay, firstly, let me show you this table. Neuroleptics, we have. Uh, antipsychotic drugs, they prevent psychosis. So when a wants you to choose a neuroleptic, it will be, they, they will focus more on the antipsychotic, yes, we're going to get into it more. When Crocs wants to talk about um, anxiolytic, they'll talk about fear, yes, a person is afraid, we need to give um, anxiolytic to decrease this anxiety, and then sedative is where we just want to cause sleep, yes, to sedate this person. So let's talk about the um, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a type of psychosis, delusion, hallucination, so on and so forth. Yes. Now, in schizophrenia, we give what? Neuroleptics are, please, this is all you need to know for Croc. Croc will not really go into detail because clinical settings, you just need to know the drugs and how to, which one to give. We don't need to go into details, yes. Neuroleptics are mostly given in schizophrenia, yes, or talk about like psychotic states and in maniac states like um, bipolar disorders. Good. So you can see 
uh, the names. Please just take a screenshot of this. I need you need to just know the names and classification because sometimes people just tell they will tell you that the drug is a family of pentos as uh, tyazine. You know the answer. They say it's a butyrophenol. You know the answer. Yes. So uh, we'll quickly do uh, clopromazine. Please, I need to know the other name is amanizinium, am aminazinium. Forgive my pronunciation. Yes. So let's one more focusing on this. Please, it's very important because yes. Mechanism of action is it blocks dopamine receptors, yes. So it decreases uh, dopamine, yes. It, uh, it decreases dopamine binding to the receptors, yes. And I also need to know that cropomycin is very important. I'm focusing on it because you can see the other effects it has. It inhibits dopamine receptor, alpha adrenal receptor, serotonin receptor, histamine receptor, m colonial receptor, yes. So it decreases delusion, the psychotic state, and everything. So because of this, it binds to a lot of things. There are a lot of side effects. Please, the side effect clock is going to focus on is this. It's an antipsychotic drug. It can produce something known as what? A Parkinsonian syndrome. A Parkinsonian-like Parkinsonian -like syndrome. It's known as what? A neuroleptic syndrome. So we give, this person has a psychosis. Yes, we give um, this drug. And then we find out that this person is exhibiting sign of Parkinsonian disease. Yeah, it's not like this person developing Parkinsonian disease. It's a side effect. Very important. Also know that because it blocks M. coli, because it's a muscarinic blocker, it will cause what? Dry mouth, constipation. Yes, very important. Yeah, because it blocks alpha adrenal receptor, it can be autostatic hypotension, lightheadedness, please. And here, very important point again, it, in, it inhibits um, hematopoiesis and especially causes leukopenia and a granulocytosis important that's all you need to know yes then let's talk about other preparation let's quickly talk about haloperidol and droperidol so uh they are you can see they are both butyrilophenol derivatives what's their differences uh let's talk about droperidol droperidol has no what colino blocking activity so it doesn't have any anti what muscarinic um muscarinic antagonist effect it's please anti-shock anti-arrhythmic and anti-hypertensive drug yes it's mostly used for what neurolep Calengasia, why haloperidol is, can you see that droperidol, droperidol also doesn't have antipsychotic effect. Do you notice it has no or little antipsychotic effects? It mostly have anti-shock, anti-arrhythmic, anti-hypertensive, yes, and it's used for neuro, neuroleptalengasia. Haloperidol has strong antipsychotic uh, drug, anti-emetic and sedative effect, yes, good. Oh, so when I was talking about that uh, Parkinsonian-like syndrome, I need you to know that it's also known as neuroleptic syndrome and extra pyramidal syndrome. Know that, please. Okay. What is neuroleptalangasia? It's anesthesia when you mix a narcotic analgesic. Please write this down. Fentanyl with what? A droperidol. Important. So now we're moving to the anxiety drug. So anxiety drug, what you need to focus on? I told you, so when they're talking about epilepsy, it's mostly what? Uh, phenobarbital, yes. When you're talking about psychosis, it's mostly what uh, clob, ami, aminazinium, yes, something like that. When it's anxiety, what you, when it's an anxiolytic, is what benzodiazepine, good. Why am I focusing on benzodiazepine? We need to focus on what uh, this first one, number two, and number three. Okay, let's so clo, please know the name and the other name, very important, yes. Next, Okay, this is very important. What's the mechanism of action? Benzodiazepine, I think I explained it to you. Yes, good. Then please, it's contraindicated, uh, the first drug, which is clodiazepoxide. Please, it is contraindicated in a person that needs to focus or that the job that is working, that needs attention. So you can talk about um, fear or anxiety, but we need to give a drug to prevent anxiety, but we need a person to still be able to focus. It would not be what this. Please, very important. Why am I telling this? Because we have uh, gidazepam and medazepam. Yes, they are known as daytime tranquilizer. Why? Because they can be given. They they don't make. Uh, they can be given uh, to prevent anxiety. And you can see it's used in patients who need increased attention in their job. So it doesn't have that contraindication. The same thing with gidazepam. Okay. Then diaz. The palm is stronger than the first drug we use. 
And when I was talking about the anxiety, anxiety drug, they mostly focus on diazepam and not the first one I just told you, but I told you that in case Cook wants to bring it, yes, they mostly focus on diazepam and it has anti seizure effect and is more potent than the first one we did. Okay, now that we know that, let's quickly do sedative. We just want to call sleep. So we have sodium bromide, potassium bromide, and that's all you need to know. Cork will not really, I've never seen Cork talk about sedative, yes, but just know the names. Then for maniac, yes, for mania, what do you give for bipolar disorder? Yes, the antipsychotic drug, like what? Uh, Clo, aminazinium, yes, the first one I told you, yes. You can see the other drug you, you can give. You can also give carbamazepine. You can also give evaporic acid, but Cork will focus on the first one. Okay, the next thing we need to talk about would be opioid so please opioid is very important so opioids yes they prevent pain yes how do we uh, differentiate please i need to know morphine codeine promidol also known as tremeperidine fentanyl please is very important why am i focusing on morphine morphine is contraindicated in pregnancy yes why Morphine is very potent, very strong, and it causes respiratory depression. Can you see it? Inhibits the central nervous system, inhibits respiratory center, so respiratory depression, inhibits the uh, cough center, causes decrease of cough, inhibits the vomiting center, can cause bradycardia. So morphine is very, it has a, it's very strong and very suppressive. So that's why it's contraindicated in uh, in children. So if they talk, talk about pain in a child uh, less than three, we cannot give morphine. It's also important to get an elderly person to above six to five. Very important. And in pregnancy too. But even though it's not yet in pregnancy, very important. If poisoning with morphine, please focus on chain stoke breathing or cogwheel. We'll see the other name called, don't worry. Chain stoke breathing. Yes, once Cork talk about chain stoke breathing, acute poisoning with what? Morphine. There'll be unconsciousness, respiratory depression, bradycardia. Okay, good. Emergency help, of course, we need to lavash. Potassium permanganate, naloxone is an antagonist, very important. And why do we give atropine? Very important because we want to decrease the vagal action of morphine because morphine causes bradycardia, respiratory depression by stimulating the vagus nerve. So we give atropine because atropine is a what? Parasympathetic blocker. So we need to block this vagus nerve action. So we give atropine. So please know these the three drugs. Then let's talk about the differences. So codeine. It's not as potent as morphine. We mostly give cough, um, codeine for cough. Yes, we mostly give it for cough. It causes less, it causes respiratory depression, yes, but less. Okay, let's move on. The, the next thing we need to focus on is promidol. Promidol, also known as this. Why am I talking about it? Because it's very important for you to know that it is, look, it is stronger than morphine, but why is it very good? It causes less inhibition of central nervous system, less inhibition of respiratory center, less uh, stimulation of vagus nerve, and it has what a spasmolytic action on GI tract. So it inhibits spasm, spasmolytic. It inhibits spasm of the GI tract. It also stimulates uterine contraction, yes, in labor. So please, it will be. Okay, they didn't write contraindication, so it's contraindicated in a pregnant woman, but it will be indicated in a, in a woman who is at labor. So once this one is in pain, we don't give morphine to a pregnant woman in pain. We don't need to cause respiratory depression. We don't give codeine, yes. We will give promidol because in labor, because it's stronger than morphine, so it will decrease this pain and it will cause uh, uterus contraction and it doesn't have any spasmodic effect on the GI tract and no respiratory depression. Fentanyl, please. I need to know that fentanyl it's, we know that it's combined with doperidol to cause what? Neurotalinagasia, uh, also known as dissociative anesthesia, anesthesia, yes. Okay, fentanyl. Has side effects like respiratory center, depression, bradycardia. There is a drug that is, okay, then please, I need to focus on pentazosine is an agonist and antagonist of opioid receptor so it both decrease pain and can also increase pain that's all you need to know then the next thing you need to know is naloxone naloxone okay next one please is tramidol i think this is what i wanted to focus on please focus on tramidol it can talk about an opioid agonist an opioid antagonist they would put what tramidol uh you can see uh so that's all you need to know yes it causes side effects like headache sweating vertigo all this point just write it down yes naloxone naloxone is the uh, antagonist that's what you need to know how does it work what's making of action of naloxone it competes 
for the opioid receptor. Yes, so if there's excess morphine, yes, we give naloxone so that naloxone can compete for where morphine will bind, so it will displace morphine because it has a stronger affinity for the uh, for the um, opioid receptor, so it will the uh, it will bind to the opioid receptor than morphine. But don't forget the gla gastric lavage and the atropine. Okay, that's all. So if after don't worry, when we start NQ, you're going to fall in love with this. But if after you still want to make sure that you know you are very good at this, please start with this pharmacology, speed pharmacology by um this speed pharmacology, basal that's been barbiturate and hypnotic. Yes, you can watch it and from what I've said, it will build on to build on to the knowledge. And after you watch that, then you watch drug for Parkinsonian disease. Yes, so that you know other drugs, but I focus on one cocoa action and anti anti-epileptic. Yes, then next we focus on antidepressant, then antipsychotic. Okay, I didn't do antidepressants. Yes, let's do antidepressants. So these are the five videos you need to watch if you just want to build on your knowledge. So let's quickly do antidepressants. Yes, so a patient is depressed. Yes, and they please we have. Please know the classifications. Yes, know the classifications like the inhibitors, the non-selective, the selective for serotonin, the selective for norepinephrine, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Just know the classification because that's all you mostly need to know for clock. But I'm going to focus on what, please, imipramil and amitriptyline. Please, amitriptyline is not the same thing as what? Aminazinium. Remember from that, uh, for the antipsychotic drug. Yes, I noticed that clock will put these two names together to confuse students. Please don't mistake it. So why am I talking about this um, antidepressant? It's very important. Uh, we have imipramil and amitriptyline. But why do we mostly give amitriptyline and not imipramil? In the uh, when the patient, if a patient comes, the patient is suicidal. We cannot, we don't start with imipramil because imipramil takes a longer time to act. So let me look for it. So it's it's, a, it's also known as a tricyclic antidepressant. So please know that's an important point. And look at it. It's it's it starts what slowly two to three. So imagine a patient is uh what happens what they when previous days was we give imipramil and the patient is suicidal. But we see that this patient still commits suicide. Why? Because imipramil has not started working. It starts working two to three weeks. So we don't start with imipramil, but we can give imipramil plus the uh, first drug for long term effect. But what do we give in emergency? We give amitriptyline. Amitriptyline. It starts quicker, yes, 10 to 14 days. It starts quicker than uh, two to three weeks. It actually starts quicker than 10 to 14 days. It actually starts in like five days. I don't know why they wrote that. Please also focus on the anti-muscarinic effect. That's what you need to know. And it doesn't cause what insomnia, yes? So this person will not feel sleepy, yes? Okay, now that we know that, let's move on to the next group of drugs. The next group of drugs is focus on the neurotropic drug. Neurotropic drug, they have to improve the memory, yes? And please just focus on this piracetam. Clock can spell it as P Y R A C E T A M, also known as what neotropy. So you can talk about to improve the memory, choose what piracetam. Okay, so that it's not a lot of information. Let's just start with the questions. Yes. So a patient uh, had delirium and hallucination with what schizophrenia. You are right. They asked you what. Anti, uh, you gave ami, aminaz, aminazine or aminazinium. What is the mechanism of action? I told you when it's antipsychotic, you talk about what aminazine. So, of course, we know it has what that five effects it blocks histamine, adrenergic, dopamine, serotonin, and what's the last one? Yes, you know it. So, that, what, what do you think the action will be? Of course, blockage of adrenaline and dopamine process. Yes, why didn't you choose blockage of cholinergic? Because, yes, it does block cholinergic. But you know that it blocks five. Yes, yeah, so we'll choose the one that is more. So blockage of adrenaline and dopamine. Yes? Good. 